um, which represent uh, Mijen, uh, which is a, basically a Python library uh, to build uh, uh, complex digital hardware. Uh, so, I'm working at Ed Labs uh, doing uh, the software and hardware. Uh, for now, I've, I'm working on basically two projects. The big project is a art, it's called Arctic for an IST, and it's a trapped iron uh, quantum computer. And as a hobby, I'm porting NetBSD to uh, Microsoft. Uh, so, okay, so, you can find me on Twitter. Um, okay, the idea of uh, Vision is it's kind of a meta language, so by writing uh, uh, Python objects, you're describing your hardware like, a, like another HDR, but then you can generate, in the end, your very low code. So think of it a bit like a generate statement in very low. So it, you, you generate very low lines instead of directly writing very low lines. So, um, Basically, in the design, you just uh, use uh, synchronous statements, which are synchronous to the clock, and combinatorial uh, statements. So that's the main idea. It's very really simple, and uh, and you use all the object-oriented uh, power of Python and all the syntactic sugar and the gener generator stuff and everything. So you can do pretty uh, beautiful code. So I will show you after. So okay, the first element is just a signal, it's kind of like a wire or a register. Then you perform expressions doing operation between the signals, and you can do assignments, and then you put all those into either a combinatorial or a, a synchronous uh, way. And you put all these in modules, and then you can just generate the code or for the module or even directly synthesize directly calling the IEC, IEC or whatever to chain. Okay, and now for the speaking, now uh, demonstration. Um, so, that's an almost fresh uh, Debian installation. Uh, let's try to have video text. Is it readable for everyone? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Back? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, okay, just for answering to the real world, just to Okay. Um, so, first thing. We want to install Vision, mm -hmm. so you just clone uh, uh, the repository. Should be pretty fast. Yeah, I'm really starting from scratch here. <laughs> uh, so, uh, then you uh, need Python 3 uh, tools. I heard the password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it's password. <laughs> and then you can just set up.
Okay, that's it. It's installed. Now you can use it. So you just start your Python interpreter, and you can um, in, uh, just, it's a library, so you basically import the library. Um, okay, now I can play with Mijian objects. So let's, for instance, just uh, declare a signal, it's a basic uh, element. So here I just have an A signal. Um, I can uh, try to see how many bits it has. So since I didn't put any um, arguments, it's by default one bit signal. And, uh, I can uh, try to have a look at the reset value, it's zero by default. If I want to do a 16 bit signal, I can just do this. Okay. Um, now, with those, you can build operations. So if I do, uh, so A equals signal, B equals signal, I can do, just do A or B, for instance, and it will return an operator. Uh, object, so if I assign this, then I can just have a look, so the operator is the OR, and then I can just uh, look at the operands, so it's an array with a signal A and signal B, so it's a bit of the spirit of the language is you've got objects that are nested, and it's building the language like this, so then you can do uh, assignments, so for instance, you can do uh, so a signal C, and you can do C dot H um, to do the assignment, and you say C will be equal to A or B. And this is returning also another object, which is an assignment object. So equal isn't the equality operator, it's assignment. <laughs> it's assi assignment, yeah. It's, it's not like Boolean, like equal, equal. Hmm. Yeah. So you can, for instance, say, okay, let's call a D, you say C, C equal A or B. When I have this object, I can then play a bit with it. Uh, I can do, uh, for instance, I can say the left side is uh, C. Um, and the right side, what is it? The right side is an operator, and the right side is an operator, which is open A and B, etc. So it feels like it's... Um, so using, again, the Python um, spirit, uh, you can do uh, if also, which are objects. So for instance, I can do if A equal equal B. Um, that's the condition. And then afterward, you can put a list of, uh, of instructions. And then you, you describe the, the true part and then the false part. So for instance, I can say, so if A equal equal B, uh, you do the assignment, uh, I don't know, uh, C, I don't know, equal A plus 1. Okay, that's an object, if object. But then, for the else part, there is just a method of the, of the if, and you can uh, just say that, that else, you, you say, okay, C equals 0, for instance. And if I assign all of this, like, uh, it's an if, so it's I, then I can do if uh, I dot, uh, what is it, is it I, uh, dot I dot cond, so you get the condition, which is an operator, which is equal equal between A and B, and etc. And I can go to the true part or the false part, and the dot S is just filling the false uh, part of the A. So, okay, that's really a low level basic blocks. Uh, now let's try to write something meaningful. Um, Let's try to do um, a lead blinker. Uh, so you lost everything that you typed. Uh, yeah, sure. I wanted to see the method to output value from okay. this i that you already got there. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I could show that. Uh, <laughs> I would just show the printing of very log uh, on the lead example, uh, okay. on the LED example. Okay. So let's. So okay, same here. We are going to do uh, port. Okay. So um, 
Oh yeah, I forgot to tell, so um, the, the top basic block is a module. So let's uh, declare a module that will call it uh, blinker. It's uh, narrating from module. Uh, and declare the um, constructor. Um, since we need to blink an LED, we need to pass an LED to this module. That will be the, the output of the module. So we will pass an LED and for this case a period. Uh, a max a period of blink. Okay? So uh, now inside uh, this uh, I can declare a signal, so let's declare uh, a counter. Uh, counter equals signal. So we, we can say that the maximum value of uh, the counter will be max period. We need to put plus one because it's uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's exclusive uh, um, bound. Um, so okay, we just declare, and by just saying the max value is, it automatically infers the number of bits. Um, so uh, what what do you do now? <coughs> Let's declare a period, which is also a signal, same thing. Okay, now how do I uh, put meaningful stuff? So we are going to declare combinatorial and synchronous uh, stuff. So for instance, some combinatorial, which is inside the module, it will be to say, okay, the period is max period. So we just do period dot x, max period, and that's it. This is an assignment. And then we need to do some synchronous stuff. So basically, in the module, you declare signals and you put stuff inside uh, self.comb and self.sync, and that's it. And then you will generate everything. So uh, we need to put several stuff here, so let's put an array. Egg is at the right hand side, the chain assignment, or does it uh, just read the value? Uh, X is just saying that you're assigning the right hand side to the left hand side. And it supports uh, slicing of uh, uh, signals, etc. So you can, for instance, you could do something like uh, uh, counter uh, 0.x, uh, I don't know, uh, a period uh, 1. You can do something like that. You can okay. take In the line above, do we have two assignments? Huh? Sorry? The line above, do we have two assignments? Oh, no, uh, above, it's, uh, it's just Python assignments, those lines here. So I'm just creating Python objects, but it's not meaningful for the hardware design here. I'm just creating a Python object. What's meaningful for the design is this assignment here. This is saying, okay, my period signal in the FPGA will be assigned to the max period value, which is a constant here, because it's you kind of have to separate the Python language and the RTL that you are writing. I mean, yeah. Usually, at the, to the, at the beginning of the method, you just uh, inst uh, you instantiate the Python uh, objects, and then this is kind of a language format. This is how I understand it. I, yeah. I don't know, but it's kind of a language within embedded into Python. So you the the actual RTL code is like a period dot egg. But yeah. then the plus is equal. That's like Python code. It's a like a different thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it could be a bit disturbing at the beginning. So yes, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying yeah. here that I am adding the following uh, statement as part of the combinatorial of this module. Yeah. That's how you should be reading this line. <coughs> here is a new combinatorial stuff, and this new combinatorial stuff is assigned max period to period. That's how it should be. So, um, so now um, we can do stuff like if um, a counter, uh, here we can just put this, uh, it's all equal to uh, zero, and then you say led.x not led. Um, uh, and you can refill the counter using uh, this. Then you do the S parts, do uh, counter um, dot F, counter minus one. Okay. 
So this should be enough just to generate a simple very large module. So um, um, I could do that just by putting. Um, okay, but let's instantiate our module then. So um, we need the LED signal, so we just do that. Then we instantiate our, our blinker module, so we put uh, LED power LED. Then the period, uh, let's put some period here. And then we want to print the very log. So we are we will be using uh, something I didn't import, so uh, the very log object, which is, which is basically the back end. And we just print the conversion of the log. And what are we converting? We're converting the blinker object, and we're saying, okay, the IOs are the LED. Okay, and executing this should just write the variable. <coughs> okay. So let's have a quick look. So yeah, it's generated. It's uh, top module. Um, as we said, there is an IO which is LED to put the LED, it automatically puts the uh, clock and reset since, it, since there is a synchronous statement. It's declaring the counter, uh, the register, and period. And then it's doing the combinatorial stuff, so the assignment. Um, so you can see it's automatically generating the name of the variable to try to be meaningful and to try to be user friendly. That, that uh, dummy register, I saw that it's model generated code, is that just a workaround or something? I think yes, I'm not sure why, exa what exactly, but I think yes, it's a workaround for... Everywhere. Everywhere. I don't know if it's for uh, Icarus Verilog or for <laughs> ISCI, I don't exactly know. So no. no, no. And then you've got the, the synchronous part. Um, the, the reset is automatically gone by default, every reset value is zero, but you could say, for instance, it would be something else, and you could just put it there. Okay, so that's a very simple example. Um, now let's try to do synthesis of this. Um, uh, so let's leave this virtual machine. Because I don't have installed the Thais tools on the first one because it was really a fresh one. And then I've got Thais tools installed on this one. I'm sorry, is this meeting related to the Milky Mist? Well, the uh, MI in the name uh, and, and the other documentation of Sebastian in the name? I think so, yeah. I think it's related, but uh, I need mean, to ask him. I think it's kind of related. So it is being used uh, already in Sirius project? Yeah, uh, so the first Milky Way system and chip was done in plain Verilog, everything is Verilog. Uh, there is a second implementation which was named Milky Way New Generation at first, which is using everything uh, in Mijen, except for some Verilog parts which are reused, like the LM32 CPU, or uh, right now the More One KX, and also like the uh, Ethernet Mac. Like but yeah, and, and now it's called uh, MISOC, Mi SOC, and it's yeah, it's a re-implementation of most uh, part of Milky Way system on chip, but using exclusively MiGen except for CPU and stuff like that. So you can instantiate a very large module. You don't have to rewrite everything you've already written. You can just write stuff in MiGen and instantiate your very large of the module. That's what we're doing for the CPU. So you're saying that if you have a very long module, you can load it into the Python description already? Yes. That would be cool, because there's something missing in Shizu. So for instance... I can't find it in the annotation. If you go to uh, MISOC on uh, GitHub, and you have a look uh, in the MISOC lib where, the, where there is all the cores we're using in the system on chip, and you have a look at LM32, you just have one file, and it's basically using a special, ah, it's really small, I guess. Yeah, and it's using a special, special Python object 
for an instance, and it will just instantiate the variable element. You will just put all the ports and all the signals, and that's it. And then in another directory, you can put your variable files. And it's the same for uh, more on KX here. And was, it, was there any parameters as well there? Yeah, yeah there's parameters, parameters here. Uh, okay. So, um, now. So let's see what here. Okay, same example. Um, so now uh, let's uh, try to think about this. It's going to be quick. So let's just import it. Um, so from the inter, uh, import the, uh, the inter. Okay. So now. Um, what we want to do, we need to tell the system which board we are using. So there is Mibint, which contains the hardware description of all the pinouts of some boards, like Papillo Pro or uh, D0 Nano or KKC uh, 705 and all those boards. So I think it's. Uh, So I've just imported the Papillo Pro description and I'm calling it board. Um, so let's uh, instantiate the platform. Um, platform is just the object which contains all the description of the, the pinout. So this ball of the ball out is AD, this ball is something, etc. Um, <coughs> then um, what would you is uh, okay. We need to instantiate our linker, so linker equal. Uh, I know. So we, we need to, to have our LED, but we're not using a new signal. We are we are trying to uh, assign to LED the, the ball of the LED. So we're just doing platform uh, the request and user LED. So this will take all the information of where it is located on the uh, packet of the FPGA. And then we can instantiate our blinker and we put this LED and so, uh, <coughs> oh, it's, it's small. Okay. So now that we have our, our object, we just Say okay. Now you can uh, build everything. So we are doing platform dot uh, uh, build uh, build command line, and we just put uh, the blinker. I think it's just this. Okay, and it's uh, starting right away the binding solution. We just uh, do all the so basically, when you want to write uh, to add support in Vision and Vision for a new board, you just write. Uh, I will show you why. It just take one minute to think of that. And uh, you go in uh, Vision. So you build Vision, <coughs> and the platform will import it, and you can see there are a few boards here. Let me see all right now that board M1 and D0 now, etc. And if we have a look at the Papillo Pro here, it's really basically an array of IO, and I say user ID is pin uh, 112 and it's LED signals, etc. And you should also uh, describe uh, which uh, vendor and tool chain to use to build so. Uh, it's already uh, managed, and you just have to say, okay, I'm using the client IAC platform. So the build system knows what to use, and it also works for Altera chips right now. And I think it doesn't work yet with uh, Lattice. Okay. How many time do I have? Um, you have 10 more minutes. <coughs> um, okay. So 
So I've got the Tapilio core ball here. It's really a small uh, ball with just uh, flash and uh, small spot on the six if Okay, so now it's complete, it's generated the bit stream, it's in the build folder. So, uh, no, sorry, uh, it's here. So, what I could do, uh, I can flash it. Um, so, to fla uh, on the platform file, it's also explained in, in Python how, how to flash it, which uh, flash to which FPG have a bridge to use uh, to flash something so you can do, use something like from so and I can just do uh, what is it? I'm doing so but now I'm using I'm Checking the programmer. Uh, now, what is it? Programmer. This is a board of programmer. Uh, ah, no, okay. It's, a, it's platform dot create programmer. Uh, and then, using this programmer, I can directly program the board. So I can do that just load this stream, for instance. I say it's build the top dot bit. And okay, that should work. Okay, indeed, uh, I should uh, put the USB device into the little machine. And okay, it's, it, has, it has used the X uh, C3S frog and sent uh, the bit stream. So if I just reset the board because it's put into flash. Okay, and now the LED is flashing. Okay, so that's just um, loading a simple LED. So we already we only did a simple module. It's not a system module, just a module which controls the LED. But we can do much more. Uh, we can very easily, with very few lines, instantiate a whole system on chip with interconnect arbitrary, uh, CPU, and even uh, generate header files with a uh, uh, the address of the uh, calls, register, which are memory mapped and everything. And if I have done, I can show a very really quick example of this. It's also a LED blinker, but it's a LED blinker controlled by a CPU, so it's a call uh, on wishbone. So, uh, where is it? Uh, it's not, uh, it's uh, blinky. So, uh, just showing the code. Basically, the code of the. to, to do a system and chip with blinks, an LED is just. You're declaring your blinker class, which you know is not it's, it's the entire top module. Okay, it's a module. Uh, it can generate um, a register which are memory maps. Um, you uh, okay? This is just the description of the module. Sorry, it's not a system module. So now, uh, since I need to be able to change the frequency of the blinking. Uh, using uh, the CPU, we are using a register which is memory mapped. That's how we are doing it. We are doing a CSR storage, and by just doing using this line, it's creating a register and the address decoder and plugging it to the wishbone uh, bus. And then that's the normal usual uh, code. And now for the system, for the SOC, it's just you uh, inherit from base SOC. You say in your, that your register map is uh, I have a blinker. You update your register map, and you add as a submodule that you have a blinker submodule, and you, and you pass it the user ID, and that's basically it. Just those lines are enough to instantiate the whole, uh, the whole SOC with the arbiter, the wishbone. The so by just going to the my sock. Uh, repository and can say okay I want to make a system on chip uh, with the target uh, which is external and it's the blinky 
using Blinky, which is the name of the file in the target directory. I can, with one command line switch, select if I want to use LM32 or more 1KX. So I say I want to add a parameter, it's a CPU type, and it will be uh, on K. And I think that's it. And you say all. And okay, so at the beginning it's. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah. If I go up a little bit. Okay, so it's, a technique, it's building for Papillo Pro because uh, it's, uh, it's a default target for the Blinker, for the Blinky project. Then, okay, I said that it's dash T Blinky, so Blinky target, sub target Blinky SOC, and I selected our 1K CPU. So it's automatically um, uh, building the BIOS for the target. So it, this is uh, compiled using the um, our 1K function. Then it's saying, okay, I'll add this. Uh, and it doesn't find the compiler in RT. Directory, that's fine. So yeah, basically instead of the target all, I could just say build bitstream, it would generate the entire SOC. I could say uh, build BIOS, it would only generate the BIOS. I could say build headers, it will generate the .h containing the, the address here of the register that controls the frequency of the blinking. <coughs> And then I can do flash dash bitstream to flash it, or flash dash BIOS to flash the BIOS, etc. So it, it's not also just writing the modules or writing the SOC, it's also doing the building stuff, uh, describing the board, and also it can generate code and it can generate headers or project. And then, okay, I will stop here because we don't, we don't have the time to generate the entire SOC, it takes 10 minutes. But okay, uh, let's uh, assume I built it. So I will take something I pre generated. So it will generate this. I put it in the build directory. Then now I can just say uh, flash BIOS to flash the BIOS. Do I need to be root or not? No, I don't need. Yeah, sometimes it fades because I think I have a hardware problem on the wall. So writing some flash is a bit irrelevant. Okay, so I successfully flash the BIOS, now I flash the bitstream. It's a bit longer. So everything is integrated into the, the system. From the writing software to... And even the testing part. I won't have the time to show the testing part, but you can basically... When you do a module, you can just define uh, one method which is called uh, dev generator or no, gen simulation and you can run a module uh, into a simulator so it would uh, bootstrap uh, Icarus variable and then uh, discuss with it and it will do at each clock cycle it will call your, met your Python method and you could uh, so write two signals, read signals so you can inject data and see how it behaves and you can check if it behaves but that's done to the VPI, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a VPI module. So it should be simulated. It should, that method should be supported by any simulator. That's not completely break that. Yeah, maybe, because uh, I don't know VPI is something standard. No? Yeah, yeah. Okay. except for Xilinx toy crap simulator. So it should work for this also, then. But uh, we are only, only using it for Keras Okay, so as I said, there are other problems. So Sometimes I need to do it twice for the flash function. But yeah, it's quite complete, so did I miss anything? Um, okay, so I showed you only the basic building blocks, so signals, assignment, etc. But on top of this, there, there are a lot of libraries that you can use. For instance, one of those is a CSR to just say, okay, this register it should be memory mapped and on the wishbone, etc. So that's pretty handy, you don't have to worry about uh, enlarging your. Uh, uh, the size or the slave decoding address and etc. But you've got you can also generate FSMs. Uh, uh, you can use a data flow paradigm, so you can declare actors that are exchanging tokens. 
uh, to uh, be, for instance, I don't know, a pipeline or something like that. Uh, what you have, you, you have a DRAM controller that you can just instantiate. Uh, you can instantiate a DMA actor and give data to, to it, and it will just uh, directly write to DRAM. And it's doing arbit arbitrary generation, analytic decoding, and post management. So, to, to build an associate, it's pretty. Yeah, I have a question. Just I wanted to know because everything I mean above uh, signals is based on wishbone, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I was well, wondering yeah. if you can define another interface. Yeah, you, I think you can. Uh, I need to dig uh, a little bit deeper to see, but I think yeah, it's properly uh, object oriented, uh, abstract, abstracted. So I think there is a bus. Uh, class and you need to inherit from the bus class, etc. So I think yeah, it's pretty doable. Okay. So uh, this works right now. So I can just uh, fire up the console. Uh, it's going to be quick, and we should see. Okay, I reboot the board, and now instead of just a single module which is blinking. You see the complete SOC starting, so it's MISOC, BIOS starts, okay, DRAM is pushing the noise DRAM here, uh, and okay, it's got your console, you can do help, you see you can read the um, address space, write address space, etc. So uh, I could directly, by writing here in the command line, for instance, I could control the register and the frequency of the AD, for instance. I don't know if I have a bit of time or if I'm too short here. <laughs> Uh, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, go on, a few more minutes. <laughs> okay, thanks. So, for instance, let's show. I uh, know oh it's. Uh, yeah. So, in the software part of MISOC, you can see that now there is include and there is a generated directory. In the generated, there is. Okay, we can generate stuff. And CSR.h. So I can see that my blinker base is this address, and the blinker frequency address is this one, and it even did some uh, functions to write to it and to read it, so I can just use that from the code. But I can, for instance, try to play with this address from uh, here, from the command line, so I can try just to read it. But uh, it's more this one. Okay, so here for now it's key for, I don't know if you will be able to see, so it's blinking a bit here. Um, if I do memory write to this, okay, not this, I just left the console. Okay, uh, if I uh, do a memory write, uh, And I put, for instance, a zero. Then the let goes solid. And if I put again e4, it should go uh, again uh, blinking. Yeah. So okay, I'm controlling directly the register, which is memory map. And this is just the BIOS, but it also uh, built a software, a really simple software, which can be loaded by the BIOS. So, it's really so if I go back to the Blinky, it's not, it's not only uh, describing the SOC uh, in Python, it's also, there is also a small software which is supposed to be running on the SOC. Uh, on the SOC. And it's uh, really straightforward, it's just the main, and it's just training demo and you can type a, a, a key between 0 and 9 and stay in the frequency. And if I just do in theory make uh, load, And I should do it as this. 
it will just use the BIOS functions to um, load the program and into RAM and jump on it. So, in theory, if I just uh, reboot the board, it should. Okay, now we booted our program and I should be able by. Yeah, typing, I'm typing on the, okay, there is some output, oh yeah, because I have two UARTs open on the same, <laughs> two terminals on the same UART, but if I put, I select here on my keyboard, you can see the, blink, the LED blinking is changing frequency, so okay, that's basically it. Cool. Is it documented uh, that uh, the autos for ignorant people like me wants to try to play with this? Sure. Or shall I look at, at, at your film and type what you type? No, no, no. It, there is definitely a tutorial. I, I was helped by this tutorial to prepare the presentation, so I found the information in the documentation. Okay. Great. So, yeah, there are, uh, there are also other information in the slide. I didn't show everything at the time. Okay, sure. But, yeah, it's really good. Okay. This requires Python 3.3. Sweden, Sweden, at yeah. least. So that's a bit of an issue when you're using Debian. So here I'm using Debian Jesse, which is a testing. Because I, I have written this for, I mean, for you so that you have few generators. Um, I've written a custom very long generator and it feels like worse than the average just to duplicate the effort. But I'm also worried about uh, the people that are using QSOC are using 2.7 and not more. So yeah. That is a bit of a problem. Yeah, I, I understand that uh, even for, for all distribution, but for modern distribution, I think it would be like a good to ship out Python 3.3. That's quite new. I think Sebastian made a good choice to take the newest possible uh, framework because by the time the the information about availability of this tool is spread, this tool will be new and not so new and yeah. and, and, and you you work around the obsolescence of stuff. If you start a project to the the very latest uh, then I think it's a good choice even if now that we have a few users it's a little of a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a quick example for instantiating a wishbone bus. It's pretty easy. First part you Say so yeah, I've got two masters, CPU, uh, instruction layers, and then you can put all the slaves, and you can even use the cool lambda function of Python to do the address decoding, and it's a few lines, and okay, that's it. Generate the arbitrary and everything. And if I want to add one, I just add one line, and I, I add one, and I, I'm adding one slave. Uh, and it's same for for instance, the Rhino gateway for a sort of different radio experiment, they are even generating uh, for the real-time operating system, they are generating the software to access the registry. Yeah.